Tozer. It's always fun to read Tozer because he's more of our contemporary to the times that we live in today and seemed to have a good handle on what was coming and what was about to happen and warned about it. And in so doing, a lot of people <laughs> loved him and he got popular, but then when you started to read more of his writings, you realize that he's not just a popular author, but he's a very precise person that God inspired to give us concerns and issues that we face today. Which is why I include that in reading my devotionals in the morning, because it's one thing to read the scriptures and to feel the warmth of God and the promises and allow the Holy Spirit to choose and pick what we might read and for reading consistently then maybe some place and point in time it applies to us but also it's good to have those things that might rub us a little bit and make us think about you know that's true and we need to look at that issue or that struggle or that problem especially if we ourselves are involved in it or we are a part of it I like to focus in on Jesus and sure I'd like to just talk about the gospel and always share that to save souls from hell but at the same time I think that we need to be mindful of those things that are around us that are in error that are wrong and the only one that can really give us a good perspective on that is God because he may be doing something with a person that's involved in error that he's bringing them through the error to get them out of the error. <laughs> Sounds strange, doesn't it? I have no idea what God's going to say in here, but maybe that'll make it more clear. Spiritual authority. The word and the testimony. <laughs> Okay, maybe it will. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. Hmm. Gee, I don't think I've ever experienced that. Have you? Whatever it may be in our Christian experience that originates outside the scriptures should, for that very reason, be suspect until it can be shown to be in accord with them. If it should be found to be contrary to the word of revealed truth, no true Christian will accept it as being from God. However, however high the emotional content, no experience can be proved to be genuine unless we can find chapter and verse authority for it in scriptures. To the word and to the testimony must always be the last and final proof. Whatever is new or singular should be also viewed with caution until it can furnish scriptural proof of its validity. Throughout the 20th century, quite a number of unscriptural notions have gained acceptance among Christians by claiming that they were among truths that were to be revealed in the last days. The truth is that the Bible does not teach that there will be a new light and advanced spiritual experiences in the latter days. It teaches the exact opposite. Nothing in Daniel or the New Testament epistles can be tortured into advocating the idea that we of the end of the Christian era shall enjoy light that was not known at its beginning. Beware of any man who claims to be wiser than the apostles or holier than the martyrs of the early church. The best way to deal with them is to rise and leave his presence. If that's not a mouthful, I don't know what is, because in this day, in this age, in this time of the internet, we have thousands of websites and thousands of people opening up blogs stating that they have some new quote-unquote way of spelling God, some cool, some new quote-unquote way of seeing God, some new everything that, guess what? I, in my personal opinion, think that since the time of Jesus, we've gone downhill in our knowledge and not uphill. We understand better how it fits, possibly, but we're not as intimately involved in it as I believe that the early church was. Now, that isn't to say that we're failing or that we're falling away, 
but it's to say that we don't have as better appreciation of it because we're not in touch in touch with the actual source as the early disciples were and so they were dependent upon and realized that with their world being so intimate with God that they needed to be and required to have faith in what God said. We in our technology now can be distracted by everything of the world and be involved in it that we get sometimes sidetracked by those things that people say they discovered or found. Don't buy into it. The bottom line is that if it's true in the beginning, it's true in the middle, and it's true in the end. The volume of the book is what speaks of Jesus, and the volume of prophecy, the volume of any teaching, whether it be healing, spirit, soul, body, flesh, sin, or hell, has always been in the volume of the book. You can find it in the beginning, you can find it in the middle, and you can find it in the end. As a matter of fact, you can find it. I tell people often on the internet that with so much garbage being taught, not by necessarily well-intentioned pastors, but I mean by people that are just going off on their own and deciding to start their own ministry or start their own way of thinking, that it's better to Google whatever question you may have and compare the answers. Ask God to lead you, of course, you know, because that's who's teaching you anyways. But you can use the technology and the terminology that's correct in finding the answers that God wants you to have. You don't have a Bible? You can have 15 to 30,000 different varieties of Bible if you check the internet. Every day it seems like somebody's coming up with a new way of changing a certain word, but changing one word or two to better understand it isn't going to hurt the context of it because you're examining all the book, not just one little verse or one little section, and you don't go running off with one thought that you have because you found out that one little piece might be a little bit wrong. No, examine the entire perspective of it and then extend it just like the Bible does. Whatever doctrine it may be, extend it from back. Look and see if it actually was or is in the scripture and then extend it forward and see what happens and what the consequences of this new idea is. When the Messianic movement came about, it was interesting because it was, it was simply about Christians, Christian Jews, who decided to call themselves by, instead of Christ, Messiah. So they said messianic. Then they got involved in all kinds of crazy ideas and desires and wanting to go back to Jewish roots and Hebraic roots and finding roots and digging in the roots. And you think that they were root bound, you know, and that they need to get out of their pot so that they could be planted in some other place. But unfortunately, because they were into discovering their heritage and their valuation of church history, they didn't recognize that there was a volume of what they were meant to be, to know the roots, the stem, the branches, and the integrity of the entire planting of the Lord, not just one aspect of it. And so too, the same is true in Pentecostalism. At one point in time when the church was dead, God said, hey, the Holy Spirit is alive and chose to inspire those outside the church to come into the church to teach them again the ways of the Lord, that the Holy Spirit is alive and well and living inside the believer. And that the gifts were meant to be used and chosen for individuals to reveal Jesus in the latter days. But unfortunately now, you can hear more about the Spirit than you can hear about God. You can hear more about gifts than you can hear about Jesus. You can hear more about healings than you can hear about the gospel. And that's not right. So Tozer warns us, be mindful of those things that God is revealing in you, to you, and with you. Because all around you, even as he said, very specifically, there shall be false teachers among you. He didn't say they'd be outside, like the cults. They wouldn't be weirdos, like rolling around on the floor and babbling, but that there would be false teachers among you. And you don't have to go looking for some popular person, whether a Billy Graham or a Rick Warren or a Greg Laurie to pick on. Because the false teachers he's talking about are just simply those people around you that may be not as famous, 
but may be infamous in the sense that they lead you astray without you knowing it. Because once you start to look for the truth, God will guide you by his Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of truth. Don't listen to the ways of men and how men interpret and their understanding trying to designate what something means, but rather you read it for yourself, by yourself, with God, and you'll find the truth. And the truth, Jesus said, will set you free. Because it's reality check now. It's time for you to be a man or woman of God, whether you're a child or whether you're an adult. But with the Holy Spirit, you can be one with God. And then you can never be deceived.